Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about the reproductive phase in little more detail. As I mentioned in the previous slide that there are a few more things to discuss in this phase. Now let us first talk about the plants. What happens to the plants in the reproductive phase? Now based on the difference in the reproductive phase, plants have been classified into two types. The first one is monocarpic plants and the second one is polycarpic plants. So these are the two broad categories. So what are monocarpic plants? These are those plants which flower only once in their life. Now, how is flowering related to the reproductive phase? Now, in case of plants, as I said, uh, when the plant actually starts growing, the initial is the vegetative phase or the juvenile phase, when the plant just grows, then it attains maturity. So, how do you know that the plant has attained maturity? The moment the plant starts to flower, that means the plant has become mature now because flower is the reproductive organ of the plant. So, flower starts appearing means the reproductive organs have started developing. So that means the plant has entered into the reproductive phase. Now there are certain set of plants which flower only once in their lifetime. That means they enter the reproductive phase only once in their lifetime. So such plants are called uh, monocarpic plants. Examples of such plants are wheat, rice and carrot. These are all examples of monocarpic plants. Whereas on the other hand, we have a set of plants which flower repeatedly at intervals. That means they enter the reproductive phase again. So they flower. Again for some time they do not flower and again they start to flower. So that sounds quite interesting, right? Now as I said, there are three phases. One is the um, juvenile phase, then reproductive phase and then senescent phase. Now we also studied that the end of the reproductive phase is marked by the senescent phase. So now if a plant is flowering repeatedly at intervals, so what does that mean? Does that mean that the reproductive phase is going off and again it is coming back? Is it like that? Now it is not only about the phase into which the plant is, it is also about the environmental conditions. Now the plants will flower only under suitable or favorable conditions. Now when the pl pl plants flower for the first time, that means it has entered into the reproductive phase, it will keep on flowering as long as it is in the reproductive phase. Now in some seasons it might flower and in some seasons it might not, that also depends upon the favorable environmental conditions. So some of the examples Examples of polycarpic plants are apple, orange and mango. These are all polycarpic plants and that is why you do not get mango throughout the year. You get it only uh, during the season of mango which is around April, May, June. So during those months you tend to get mangoes. Now in a very similar way in case of animals also they have been classified into two types. One is seasonal breeders and the other one is continuous breeders. Now what are seasonal breeders? These are those animals which reproduce at particular time of the year. So that means they cannot reproduce throughout the year. Even though they are in the reproductive phase of their life, but they cannot reproduce throughout the year. Only in specific seasons like how the polycarpic plants are. Or on specific seasons they can breed. So examples are birds, lizards and frogs. That is why the mating of birds, lizards and frogs are seen only during specific seasons. Continuous breeders are those which can reproduce throughout their sexual maturity. So that means they can breed any time they want throughout their reproductive phase of their life. Examples of continuous breeders are poultry, rabbit, cattle. They are all examples of continuous breeders. So, so these are the types of plants and animals based on when they breed or when they mate and uh, depending on, on their reproductive phase. So now the question is, what indicates the start of the reproductive phase? So this is something which I was talking about in the last slide also. That how do we know that yes, the plant or the animal is now ready or now the plant has is completely matured and it has entered into the reproductive phase. 
So in case of plants, appearance of flowers denote that it has entered into the reproductive phase because flowers are the reproductive organs of the plant. You remember the male reproductive organ, female reproductive part, everything is present inside the flower. We have already discussed this in our junior class. So flowers are the reproductive organs. So formation of cones now. If this appearance of flowers is only applicable to the flowering plants. Now what about the non-flowering plants? Because we have a bunch of plants which do not flower at all. So does that mean that they'll never get matured? It is not like that. So those plants, for example, the gymnosperms, their cones are formed. The male and female cones are seen. So as soon as those cones are formed, which can produce seeds, we say that the plants are matured. Whereas in case of animals, sex organs develop and mature so all the reproductive parts of the animal tend to develop which do not develop they develop initially when they are born development of secondary sexual characters in male and female let us talk about human beings in human beings you have a certain set of male and female sexual organs but even other than that you have some set certain secondary sexual characters also for example in case of male their voice changes voice tends to become more coarse uh, the, their, uh, their hair appears on their chest and also beards and new stages tend to appear. So they are all secondary sexual characters. So they also tend to appear when they enter the reproductive phase. Similarly, in case of females, the development of breasts and the development of the uh, sexual parts of female. So the, the beginning of the menstrual cycle. So all these things indicate the start of the reproductive phase. Now, as a part of the reproductive phase, there are certain changes which occur only in the females, not in the males. So right now I'm talking about the animals. So in the females, there are certain cyclic changes which take place as soon as they enter into the reproductive changes, reproductive phase. So let us see what it is. Now, following changes take place in mammals, especially the females. Cyclic changes in ovaries, now, what are cyclic? What do we mean by cyclic changes? That means changes which take place in the ovaries in a cyclic way. That means periodically the same change will take place. So many mammals exhibit these cycles only during favorable conditions. Not necessarily that the, every mammal will have these cyclic changes all the time. They, they have these cyclic changes only when there are favorable conditions. Hormones, so a lot of hormonal changes also take place. For example, if you talk about human beings, uh, there are a specific set of hormones like estrogen and progesterone in females, which actually control all the uh, organs or all the activities related to reproduction. So these hormones, the, the, there is also change in the amount of these hormones being secreted in the body. So all these changes take place only in the females. Now, it has been observed that some of the mammals exhibit these changes only under favorable conditions. Therefore, they are able to reproduce only under favorable conditions and they are called seasonal breeders. That is what I was talking about in the previous slide. Whereas, there are other set of organisms which, which exhibit these cycles throughout the year irrespective of the favor favorable or unfavorable conditions. So, such animals are continuous breeders. Now, these cyclic changes in females during the reproductive phase, it is known as a menstrual cycle and this process is called menstruation. Now, we will not get into the detail of menstrual cycle or menstruation right now. However, we will take it up in one of our later chapters. Now, the same cycle has been given a different name in non-primates. And what is that name? It is called estrus cycle. So it is uh, related to the name estrogen, the hormone which I was talking about. So it is called estrus cycle in non-primates and it is called menstrual cycle in primates. So primates would include human beings, monkeys, so all those stuff. And estrus uh, cycle would be there for other animals like cats, dogs, elephants, rabbits, etc. So this is something, this menstrual cycle or estrus cycle is something very specific to the females. This doesn't happen in case of males.
So now, let us quickly have a look at the hormones and what role do they play in phase transitions. When I say phase transition, I mean the transition from the juvenile phase to the reproductive phase or the transition from the reproductive phase to the senescent phase. So in, that, in those transition of phase, what role do hormones play? Hormones play a very important role in transition between the juvenile, reproductive and senescent phases. That is what I was just telling you. Now, the presence or absence of certain hormones can make a lot of difference inside our body. Let us take the example of human beings. Now, in males, there is a specific hormone called testosterone and this hormone is responsible for all the uh, secondary sexual characters which are seen in a male. And due to the, this hormone, due to the presence of this hormone, the male reaches their puberty at a certain age. Like maybe around the age of say 13 to 15 years, a male reaches uh, the puberty. Similarly, in case of females, you have a set of hormones called estrogen and progesterone. We spoke about all these hormones in class 11th, right? So in estrogen, it, it takes care of all the secondary female characters and also the reproductive processes. And progesterone helps or supports the female body during pregnancy. So in case of a female, so if you see a female when it, she is born, she is so small and then she gradually grows up so this is your juvenile phase and then suddenly she enters into the reproductive phase gradually so as soon as the reproductive organs develop and she enters the puberty she is said to enter the uh, reproductive age and again when her reproductive age finishes off she enters into aging and she becomes old and then that is the last phase of her lifespan so in all these these are some some of the hormones which play a very important role to make these changes inside the body so when you talk about puberty in human beings it is the period during which the rate of general body growth slows down and reproductive tissues start maturing. So it is not about like from when you are a kid. So from a kid till you are some 12, 13 years old, till that time, there is tremendous growth in your body in terms of your height, in terms of your weight. You know, so all those things grow very rapidly. But as you reach that puberty, what happens? The general growth stops and the reproductive growth starts increasing. So the reproductive organs tend to mature in females the secondary characters like the breast development start taking place in males appearance of beards moustaches start taking place so all these changes start taking place and this puberty is often known as adolescence so when you are entering into adulthood from uh, your from the life of your kids so a human male reaches puberty at around 13 to 14 years, whereas a female reaches the same around 11 to 13 years. So this is an approximate time frame when uh, a human being reaches puberty. So some of the changes observed during puberty in case of a male, thick hair growth under armpits and the genital area. So you actually tend to see a lot of hair. Uh, facial hair, which is seen in the form of beard and moustaches. Change in voice, the voice becomes even more hoarse. Uh, occasional penis enlargement, okay, so that is also seen there. In case of female, start of menstruation cycle. So every month, the process of menstruation takes place when bleeding, take, when bleeding occurs through the vagina. Now, why menstruation happens and all those stuff, we'll take up later. Breast enlargement, hair growth under armpits and genital area. So again, some of these changes indicate that the person is entering into the reproductive phase of their life. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.